Hey everybody, can you hear us? Can you, can you see us? Can you hear us? Caleb gave us a nice webcam to do this with, so it's much better than what I normally do. <laughs> I think we've got pretty much everybody up on Slack. Um, Emily, is there anybody missing from Slack? Anybody? Okay. Oh, how's everybody doing staying warm today? It was We tried going sledding. It was terrible. It was nice. Any part of my skin that was exposed to the air was like on fire from the severe cold. That's why I don't expose my skin. I mean, like this section of your <laughs> face was exposed. All right, everyone's been loaded on. That's registered. Huzzah. Okay. So we're doing trivia online because we used to do this and we got too big. Sorry, the cat will probably never leave. Um, we got too big and... Oh, Caleb's telling me it's too cold. I know it's too cold. it was too cold. Um, we used to do this in person and then we thought you know what this is actually the perfect opportunity and maybe the perfect way to do this even just in the future because it's you can gather your team you can have people anywhere and then we don't run out of space so here we are yeah and you can just have no real limits to your team yeah what's the point of that we don't care right we also still don't know what we're going to give you for a prize but there will be a prize um Emily and I just were talking about it because we used to do things like we'd be like, hey, if we gave everybody the team, the winning team, like a big Andy's gift card, you'd go out together. But that's not really like the thing that you no, can do right now. Yeah. And I know a lot of teams aren't even gathered in person. So I think we will do something that's like every person on your team will get something. But, you know, didn't figure that out. We'll figure that out. It's probably, you know, going to be something fun. That's, that's what I'll say. There, there may or may not be a vintage elf doll on the line. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I hope there's a vintage elf doll on the line because that means it will not be in our house <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so, and then it'll show back up in like every white elephant thing that ever mm -hmm. happened. Okay, so here's, here's the details. We have six rounds and... In every round, there are eight questions, except for one that's like a yes or no kind of round. So there's a lot more in that one. Um, but we'll be kind of talking through those things. Every round has at least eight questions. The questions will actually be showing up on your screen, not just us reading them all the time. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, everything's, I'm not going to say it. It's fine. Uh, Everything has worked well so far. <laughs> Why'd you say that? <laughs> so we're going to read them, but then we'll also be putting them up on the screen. You can see them. And then after a round is over, we'll say, okay, that's the end of that. And we'll give you um, a few minutes. We'll give you two minutes to kind of finalize your answers. I do suggest you have one person who's kind of in charge of um, writing stuff down yeah, writing and having down. it written down so that you can go, okay, that's for sure our answer. Um, we would like for you on the Slack app to post your cumulative score only. So you can post after every round your cumulative score. You could also say in there if you wanted to, like, boom, we got this many right. We're so awesome or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to. But but we want you guys to kind of be keeping track of that together. We can all see that. Like, we can all see who's doing whatever and you know, we if I had a team and and Steven wasn't on it, I would I would do so badly at every trivia. I mean, actually, there's questions that he's just come up with rounds that you've come up with. That I wouldn't be able to get two questions out of. So I wouldn't be able to do that. So that's that's trivia for you. But he's really good at it. So if I'm on a team with him, I get to enjoy snacks and, and then like feel like I'm part of the winning team. But it doesn't matter. like you, you can put your stuff in there. You can be competitive or not. And not, you know, worry about yeah. it. And so. just as a caveat, if you are competitive, all answers on our answer key are final. So Ooh. if you want to argue, I'll see you outside. But 
It's cold. Don't. <laughs> don't go outside. But, yeah, the answers we have are the answers that give you points. There we go. But they are accurate. They aren't, they aren't, like, weird or messed up, though, so. Um, so let's get started. Everybody ready to go? I'm going to check right. real quick because I yes. think somebody texted me. Actually, Timothy, good point. No internet cheating. Yeah, that, I mean, I was going to say that goes without saying, but if I have to say that goes without saying, then I already said something. So, you know, it's trivia. Do the best that you can and, you know, it's I mean, the worst you can do is zero. It happens. It would be me. (laughs) I feel like I got five questions right. And everyone else on my team already knew those also, (laughs) but I felt like I contributed. Um, Okay, so here we go. Uh, take it away, Stephen. All right. We're starting with sports. And this round is going to focus around visuals and questions about some famous sports pictures. All right. So name the year and city in which this man in the picture won four Olympic gold medals. Not on Slack, though. Yes. <laughs> Don't D- name it Discuss there. with your team and write down an answer. Answer person. Do that. Mm-hmm. Whoever your answer person is. You're the, an- you're the answer person. I mean, you know the answers. Right, but I'm not the write down answer person because no one can read my terrible. handwriting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on to question number two. Question two. What is the instrument shown here which created a buzz at the 2010 World Cup in South Africa? If you watch this at all, you can't get that sound out of your head. Oh, it's so cool. I really liked that. That was that was really awesome. I actually had two. We had two of those for a while. It was really fun. Then they broke because they're plastic. All right. Question three. Who delivered this infamous headbutt in 2006? It wasn't the observer. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, question four. This picture, known as the Phantom Punch, uh... Who are the two boxers in it, in this picture, this famous photo? I should just read it how I wrote it, shouldn't I? The two of those boxers are known as the Phantom Punch? No. The picture is the moment. Oh, okay. So name those two boxers. That's the thing we're looking for. (laughs) (laughs) I know one of them. (laughs) Clearly, I was the one who wrote this category. All right. All right. Question five. Who made this spectacular one-handed catch? Okay. If he really caught that, that's amazing. Like, it doesn't look like in that picture that the end of this moment was a caught football. So that's amazing. All right. Question six. Michaela (laughs) Maroney was not impressed with winning silver in what event? I remember the Olympics. (laughs) Mm-hmm. All right. 
Question seven. Who's that guy flying through the air? Oh my gosh. All right, and question eight. Final question of the round. In 1962, Wilt Chamberlain scored 100 points in a single game. That's a record that still stands. Wow. Because it was just him scoring those, right? Is what you're saying? Uh, what NBA team did he play for when he achieved this? You guys can still hear us, right? It's so weird for me to do this technology stuff. All right, so that is round one. Um, we'll give you a few minutes to confer and uh, just type in Slack if you would like us to circle back to any of the questions real quick. Yes, we just got a request to go back to question seven. Um, so it seems like everybody also is like texting and stuff back and forth with their team. Do we need to give you some more time each question before we move on? Or is this an okay pace? <laughs> Can you go back to the hockey guy looking like Superman? Okay. My Slack is not working at all. We're looking at Steven's phone. That's... Okay. Ooh, several people are typing. Well, we asked him a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like, is it... More time, please. Okay. Best. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll kind of, um, we'll kind of look at, I don't know, maybe I'll set up like a timer on my phone or something, like a stopwatch, and we'll give, um, we will give one minute per question and see how that goes. Because I think, I think it feels like uh, from this end different than it probably does from the other end. So we'll just make sure we give it plenty of time. Yeah, because we're just sitting in our living room by ourselves with no audible feedback. Mm-hmm. It's true. And there's this, there's the <laughs> Superman guy in hockey, so... What did you get for number three? <laughs> wow, sneaky. Okay. The answer. 
the correct answer. I wouldn't have. I don't even remember what number three is, but I can tell you right now I wouldn't have gotten it because I wouldn't have gotten a single one of the... No, I, I would have gotten um, the World Cup instrument. I would have gotten that. That's it. Okay. But again, everybody else would have known that. <laughs> Is it? That's what I think too, Lynn. <laughs> I know. It's a soccer player. Probably. Alright. Should we do... About one more minute? Sure, one more, one more minute. I'm starting my, starting a clock. My phone will not connect to Slack, so my phone is now becoming the the timekeeper of the game. I'm missing our blurry video. Caleb gave us the the nice cam, and now it's not all grainy and blurry like I normally just do our our camera on the laptop yeah. which is so bad but i'm like meh yeah now that we're in high def i shouldn't have gotten botox before this i mean you, it's because <laughs> you don't make that many facial expression changes that you don't have forehead wrinkles yeah that's the first time many people saw you like raise your eyebrows okay And that was one minute. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going right. to go to the answers. Pencils down. The answers are coming in now. Here they are. All right. Name the year in the city, which this man, who is Jesse Owens, by the way, in case you didn't know that, won four Olympic gold medals. And that was 1936 Berlin Games. Yep. Sure was. That's what I heard about it when you told me that. All right, number two. I know this one. That annoying buzzing instrument. Love it. 2010 World Cup in South Africa is the Vuvuzela. And that is how you spell it, and that's how I would have spelled it, and I also felt very successful for spelling it correctly. All right. Okay, the soccer player. Why does that say one again? Oh, anyway, that's question number three. Don't worry about the numbers. <laughs> this, this is number three. This headbutt in 2006, and that was Zinedine Zidane, and it cost France the World Cup championship that year. Oh, it did? Yes. Okay, this is question four. Question four, or two, two. <laughs> All right, who are the two boxers in the Phantom Punch? That was Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. Okay. This is number five. Number five. The amazing one-handed catch on the sideline by the end zone. That was Odell Beckham Jr. Or OBJ. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. And right. this is six. Six. <laughs> Michaela Maroney won silver in the vault. The vault. <laughs> okay. This is seven. <clears throat> All right. Who's that hockey player flying through the air? That is Bobby Orr. That, he scored a goal to defeat the St. Louis Blues in that game. Uh, boo, I guess? All right, and Eight. in 1962, Wilt Chamberlain played for the Philadelphia Warriors and scored 100 points of the team's i believe 162 total points that's insane the, but by himself that was 100 100 points, points by just himself. from him man that's amazing wow um no you do not get half credit on number one was if it? you only got part of it right mm. yeah i guess that's that's it all right, uh, take a couple of minutes to tally your scores. You get two minutes on the clock. It's on the clock. My phone. <laughs> I just sit my coffee. <laughs> mm. 
water break. <sighs> this is how Clyde eats soup. It's so loud. All right. Dotson's with one point. That's how, that's, that was me. That would have been me. Because I would have gotten Vuvuzela and that's it. And I would have felt pretty good about that for this category. Because we wanted to do these sports moments that were kind of captured in photography and, you know. Whoa. Good job, Campo team. Phase Cam. Is that how we say your team name? Phase Cam. Yeah, I like it. All our partials. <laughs> All right. We ready to move on to number two? I will say, again, number two is one I think that's still kind of hard because it was Steven just Steven made this you know by himself so um yep okay uh we're gonna go to our next ooh yeah okay so <laughs> as you can see from the title literally on my bookshelves all these questions are inspired by books literally on my bookshelves and I believe Annie is going to read the questions for this round. Oh, sure. Thanks. I'm sure I'm going to pronounce everything correctly. Question number one. Who wrote a classic detective mystery about Sam Spade, Joel Cairo, and Bridget O'Shaughnessy looking for a bird? Who wrote this? So looking for an author. And we're doing at least one minute on the clock. Wait, does this mean you're reading the next round? Yeah. Awesome. Because <laughs> I don't want to read that one. <laughs> I won't be able to stop laughing. It's okay, Jeff. I'm, I'm, we're the snack people. I hope you have snacks. Good snacks. Okay, we're at one minute. Uh, next question. What play by Peter... Schaefer. Schaefer, set in the court of Austrian Emperor Joseph II, is narrated by Antonio Salieri. No, he does not read any normal books. Um, I have a very, very wide collection of different genres. We have genre. so many books. <laughs> I was an English major. Literally everyone in our house likes to read. I do get points. Give me points. You get 23 points. Oh, sweet. I'm already winning. <laughs> okay. On to question three. Number three. What series of books written by a husband and wife 
follows mama, papa, brother, and sister as they go about their anthropomorphic lives. We shall see, Isaac Chow. We shall see. Okay. Let's go on to question four. Is that where we're at? Okay. Sing to me of the man, Muse, the man of twists and turns, driven time and again off course once he had plundered the hallowed heights of Troy. This is the opening line of what epic poem? Sheesh, Stephen. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Clues are in the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe later, Jeff. What, you're going to read this one? Okay, by special request, for Jeff, sing to me of the man muse, the man of twists and turns, driven time and again off course, once he had plundered the hallowed heights of Troy. Wow, I don't know why you're not reading the whole category. Number five. The title character of what Eric Carl book ate a bunch of junk food on Saturday and a leaf on Sunday? Oh, yeah. Okay. Number six, the orchard keeper, the road, and no country for old men are three books on my shelf by what author? One minute. Every question would be Nicholas Sparks, Jeff. <laughs> <clears throat> Not on the show.
All right, question number seven. What is the title of the acclaimed graphic novel by Art Spiegelman that depicts Nazis as cats and Poles as pigs? Graphic novel. What's the title? Daniel Steele. True that, Lindsay. No Daniel Steele either. Okay, this is the last one in this category. Number eight, which book in the Harry Potter series features Gilderoy Lockhart as the defense against the dark arts teacher? Because there were so many. Which book? All right. Uh, are there any we need to go back to for a second? Notify me now. <laughs> okay, number one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right what are we gonna give like three minutes here yo since we gave one minute per question we'll do three minutes here of uh quiet reflection shoring up your answers fighting with your teammates fighting with your teammates so here we go three minutes
You're about 30 seconds. Yeah, you get peppy music when you provide it yourself. So uh, I suggest going on to Spotify because that's my preferred listening hour. Oh, uh, we're really done with three minutes. Preferred listening spot because you can also go and type in uh, a search for elevator music or Muzak. Mm, yes. You know, and uh, listen to that. Or you can find some sort of pep you up playlists or something you never know it's really fun though just type in something weird like that in spotify and see what comes up it's really fun you know uh -huh. okay this is where it gets really fun this is really fun uh this was one of my favorite categories i love this i love this no we gotta go over answers oh sure we do okay here we go sports answers nope We're nope at books oh why can't we give them the answers to the sports again okay <laughs> Here we go. All right. Who wrote that detective novel with Sam Spade and those other characters looking for a bird? That was Dashiell Hammett. Wow. Ah, uh, Dashiell? Yes. Dash okay. And the book was The Maltese Falcon. Oh, yep. Didn't read that. All right. Number two. Peter Schaefer play set in the court of Emperor Joseph II of Austria, narrated by Antonio Salieri. That was Amadeus. Amadeus, Amadeus. Um, okay. Number three. Series of books written by husband and wife. Uh, with mama, papa, brother, and sister. That was the Berenstein Bears. I could have gotten that one. Sing to me, man, muse. <laughs> the man of twists and turns. Driven time and again off course. Once he had plundered the house. <laughs> that is the opening of the Odyssey. I would never remember that. I've read it, never remember that. All right. Uh, question five. It was the very hungry caterpillar that ate a bunch of junk food on Saturday and a leaf on Sunday in the Eric Carl book. And other days he ate like one thing a piece until he got real hungry on Saturday. <clears throat> All right. The Orchard Keeper, The Road, and No Country for Old Men were all written by Cormac McCarthy. Uh-huh. Uh, amazing, beautiful books. Don't read if you're depressed. Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what it is? What? Number seven? Number seven, yes. Mouse is the title of Art Spiegelman's graphic novel. Oh, you were saying don't read any of Cormac McCarthy if you're depressed. Yeah. I was thinking about the next question. Oh, also the next one. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. All right, okay. so yeah. Mouse, actually Art Spiegelman's uh, coming to terms with his father's story of surviving concentration camps. Right. In graphic novel form. Uh, and if you read Harry Potter, you probably got this one. Uh, this was the second book, Chamber of, Se or first book. Second book? Second book. Second book, Chamber of Secrets. I was thinking second book, but then, you know, I'm reading stuff off and it's like official and I literally panicked in my brain. <laughs> Chamber of Secrets, second one, because the first one was that guy with the turban. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's the one I didn't read. All right. Okay. All right, let's check in again. How's everybody doing timing-wise? Uh, we have been doing, by the clock, we have been giving one minute per question. And at the end, we've done three minutes. Is the time okay for this? This next round is going to be really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so...
Okay. How's everybody doing? We're looking at the, we're looking at our, uh, we can't get, the one thing that's not working for us is we can't get Slack to show up on our TV, which is actually in front of us. So we could look up um, screen mirroring wise, but for some reason that's not working. Um, so we just have to look at the phone, but seems like everything's going okay. The one minute per question seems okay. Yeah lightning round well this next round is kind of a lightning round yeah because this next round is yes or no questions so only so there's 14 there's this 14 one. It's like doubled so you got a 50 50 shot yeah to score a lot you do uh but it's not gonna be easy <laughs> <laughs> so we've been wanting to do this one for a while we always think about this because i tell you what mm. You know, when you see bird names, I don't know if you've if you've encountered this, like what birds are named like, but it's different than other ways that people have named things in the animal kingdom. It's like the people who name birds are, um, I don't know. It's different. It's real different. So, so this is like a true or false. So in this round, there are names of species of birds and it's either for real legit or we made it up yes and there are definitely some mm. of both we did not just like, like say that and trick you so so are you ready for birds of the world or our imaginations okay uh, okay here we go ready number one Banana quit. <laughs> Banana quit. <laughs> I can't. I'm so glad I'm not reading all of these. I thought I was going to have to read this round. I was like, I'm going to laugh at every single one. Every single one. So is that real or is that not? That's just your yes or no answer. Or true or false, however your team is. Right. Banana quit. <laughs> Yes, banana D. So we always say for no one compares, we just call yes, it banana D. I know. Moving on to number two Woodless Quissy. <laughs> Woodless Quissy. Look at the plumage <laughs> on that woodless quissy. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, that was a minute. All right. <laughs> Number three, Mountain Tarn Pick. Mountain Tarn Pick. My goodness, look at that Mountain Tarn Pick on that rock. <laughs> <laughs> One would assume. <laughs> Water. 
Four. Dark Chanting Goshawk. Dark Chanting Goshawk. Oh, I would have said Go Shock. <laughs> oh my Go Shock, did you see that bird? Okay, we'll give these like 30 seconds apiece then. Unless somebody counters and says, no, no, we're discussing it much. So much. <laughs> okay. All right. The Andean cock of the rock. Andean cock of the rock. <laughs> Have to. <laughs> <laughs> there are many birds, but I think people kind of know that one. Okay. <laughs> Number six, Rufus Putu. Is it Putu or Potu? <laughs> Rufus Putu. <laughs> oh. sentence please <laughs> I was walking through the woods when above me I heard the call of the Rufus Putu <laughs> and it said <laughs> it didn't say Putu, Putu. <laughs> okay checking. number seven Burkwat <laughs> Burke what? So glad I'm not reading these. All right, on to number eight. Hoary puff leg. Hoary puff leg. Burke, what you doing? <laughs> Number nine, the mustached flower piercer. Mustached flower piercer. Have you seen any mustache <clears throat> flower piercers in your garden recently? Yes, I have. It was piercing a flower with its extravagant mustache. <laughs> Okay, on to number 10. <laughs> Smew. <laughs> Smew. Ah, a Smew! <laughs> right there! <laughs> <laughs> the humans 
laughing at Jeff's comment. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. The Hottentot button quail. Hot and tot button quail. <laughs> uh, just a couple more, guys. Just a couple <laughs> more. <laughs> What's me with you? <laughs> Okay, number 12. Olivaceous siskin. But was it an olivaceous siskin or a regular siskin? It was very olivaceous. Okay, 13, Gilvink Megapode. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you see that Gilvink over there? Shh. They spook really easily. <laughs> That is a good band name, Timothy. (laughs) All right, and 14. Crimson Quilvern. Crimson Quilvern. All right, you get one minute now. One minute. To finalize this round. Okay, here we go. The banana quit is a real bird. Yes, it is. The woodless quissy is not. No, it's not. Nor is the mountain tarn pick. Oh my gosh, I totally <laughs> thought that one was real. <laughs> we did this, and I was like, that sounds legit. <laughs> the dark chanting goshawk, the Andean cock of the rock, the rufus poo <laughs> Are all real birds. Okay. For some reason. For some reason. The Burkwat is not. I made a that real one up. Bird. I really enjoyed that one. The hoary puff leg is a bird. The mustached flower piercer is a bird. Mm-hmm. The smew, <laughs> the smew. is indeed a beer bird. <laughs> it's a beer. <laughs> it, the hot and tot button quail is a bird. The olivaceous siskin is a real bird. The gilvink megapode is a real bird. And the Crimson Quilvern is not. Yeah, you made that one up. That was pretty good. I liked that. All right, one minute. Calculate your scores. Yes, it's time to calculate your scores. 
and then another fun round. Okay. Am I doing this one? Am I doing this one? Yes. Okay. It is. Next Here round. We go. Who is that masked man? All right. Question number one for round four. It's not really a man, but uh, <laughs> who is this behind this pink mask? Question number two. Who is behind this tablecloth mask? That is question number two. Okay, number three, look carefully. What is the name of the actor behind this Batman mask? Okay, number four. What is the name of the character behind this fanned out face covering? 
This is number four. Okay, question number five. We've all seen many Spider-Mans, but which actor is behind this Spider-Man mask? Which one is this one? We need the name of the actor. Okay, number six. This is a masked man. You have likely only seen this man in a mask. What mask did he wear? Okay, duck. Moving on. Number seven. What is the character name of this masked dude? I know you can get this, Jeff. I, I have confidence in you. I'm sure other people will too, but I wouldn't. Because I wouldn't know who it was. All right, next one, number eight. What are the superhero names of all three of these masked characters? This is the last question in this category.
Okay. Okay, we're going to go back to question number three. What is the name of the actor behind this Batman mask? Okay, going to number six. All right, any other requests? I'm gonna give you two minutes to tighten it up. Hi, everybody. We're about ready to move on. We are a little over halfway. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. We have three rounds, two rounds left? Two rounds. Two rounds left. Two rounds left. We have two rounds left. Are you ready? Yep. Ready? All right. To the answers! <laughs> okay. Scrolling. Oh, this is fun. Okay. Who was behind the pink mask? That was Sarah Jessica Parker. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. And who was behind the checkerboard mask? It's like was a tablecloth. Ta- yeah, whatever. It was Patrick Dempsey. Uh-huh. Mr. McDreamy himself. For some reason. Oh. He's dreamy, I guess. Okay. I remember him from Can't Buy Me Love, so that ruins everything he's ever done since. <laughs> Um, number three, who is that behind the Batman mask? That is the British actor Alan Napier, who portrayed Alfred on the 60s Batman series. What was he doing in the Batman mask? He was standing in for Batman so Bruce Wayne could appear and Batman could appear. Oh, they were laying a false trail. All right. All right. What character is behind the fan? That is Corporal Maxwell Klinger. From MASH. Right? Yes. <laughs> okay, you're like, do you have no reaction to that? You just said <laughs> nothing. Okay. <sighs> Which Spider-Man is that? That was Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man from uh, Spider-Man 3. Oh, yeah. 
If you're a huge nerd, you know the differences in the movie costumes. Uh, maybe, yeah. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man had raised webbing on his costume. Oh. Okay. Okay. What famous mask did that actor in the black and white picture wear? That was Darth Vader. That yeah. was, he wore the Darth Vader mask and nobody knew that was who played Darth Vader. Yes. The physicality of Darth Vader. David Prowse? David Prowse. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, because the voice was done by James Earl Jones. Yep. And then when they took the helmet off, it was somebody else entirely, right? Yes, it was end. a third actor in Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Okay, number seven. Who's this guy? The Luchador. That's Rey Mysterio Jr. Nacho! <laughs> it's not Nacho Libre. It's Rey Mysterio Jr. <laughs> All right. Number eight, what are the names of the PJ Masks heroes? That is Catboy, Owlette, and Gecko. All right, you get uh, one minute for your scores to be updated. You can post them if you want, but you don't have to. We're leaving these up. You get one minute. You guys are doing a great job with your cumulative scores. Uh, we keep reading them and then it's like, nope, just kidding. That wasn't it. <laughs> We're like, wow, everybody's doing pretty well. Oh, okay. Okay, next category. Two more rounds. No. Yes. Yes, two more rounds. Round five. Name the animal or answer this animal related question. I Since... think most of them actually are name the animal, so I think it's okay. Are you ready? All right. Okay, with round five. Question one. Question one. What animal has black skin, but you cannot tell because of its very differently colored fur? Mm, one minute. I want malt ball ice cream. <laughs> you should click on it and then reply, I want that. <laughs> they can hear us right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't need it. <laughs> Kirby's. I don't like malt by ice, ball ice cream, but Steven does, so he wants that. You should still comment it on there. I don't like typing. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I didn't say the answer out loud. Question number two. Which country has the most native marsupials? Which country? Marsupials.
Sorry. Here we go. Question three. A group of crows is called a murder, and a group of cobras is a quiver. But what animal group is known as a pandemonium? Ooh. Okay, question four. Which animal's name is Greek for horse of the river? Okay. Moving on to question five. What type of animal is a Russian blue? Yeah. Question six. What animal is responsible for the most animal-related deaths in the world annually? Okay, clarification on this question. That's human deaths caused by animals. Yeah, that. thank you for that clarification. Not animals causing other animals to die. It's probably also true in this case, though. So. But we as humans don't track that. No. <laughs>
Okay. Number seven. What is the name for the group of mammals, including the platypus and echidna, which lays eggs but still nurse their young? What's the name of the group? All right. Last one. Last question for this round. Number eight. How many hearts does an octopus have? <laughs> It'd be so funny if it was like, just one. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we ask? <laughs> Okay. All right, so <laughs> anything we need to go back to in this round? Otherwise, you have three minutes to finish up your answers. Okay, three minutes. All right.
couple more seconds. Then we'll be ready for our final round. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is your time to catch up. Or lose it all. In a moment of clarity or non-clarity. I, I <laughs> Just remember, Alf. Oh gosh, I forgot about Alf. No one wants your old elf stuffed animal. Hey, I washed it. <laughs> Been in storage for decades. Okay, our final round. Oh no, we have to go over the answers. The answers We're going yep. to the answers. Our final penultimate round answers. Here they are. All right. Black skinned animal with different colored fur is the polar bear interesting all right the country with the most native marsupials is australia it's about 70 percent of all marsupials come from australia mm -hmm. a pandemonium of parrots which if you've ever been around any number of parrots more than one it's very true they're so loud horse of the river or river horse is the hippopotamus a Russian blue is a type of cat. Mosquitoes are responsible for the most annual deaths of humans in the world. Uh, Not ants, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the group of mammals that lay eggs but nurse their youngs are monotremes, which means one whole. And octopuses or octopodi uh have three hearts it's actually i think octopuses there's contention on that i hear that but you know <laughs> i watched a whole thing where they're like asking people who study octopuses and like, oh, it's octopuses okay so one minute to uh Get your scores checked out and all of that stuff, and we'll be back with our last round. <laughs> oh that's for you daniel oh that's this is cracking me up campo's still doing well wow yeah i think i think insects are technically animals because they're in the animal kingdom, kingdom. oh Starks tied with Campos. Wow. Fun trivia. The octopus has nine brains, according to Steve Stark. It's like one in every leg and then in their head, too, or something. <laughs> uh. Rutabagas. <laughs> oh, what vegetable? I mean, what are most people allergic to? All right, are you guys ready? This is it. This is the last one. I also really like this one. Okay, here's round six, our final round. Uh, we actually have some, uh, some, I'm sorry, I just read Timothy's comments. <laughs> it's like my favorite joke. Uh, now you have to write your joke, Timothy, and everyone can know that I find that really funny. So um, this is round six. And there's some tight scoring, guys, so keep your wits about you. Don't you wish we hadn't brought this up? Number one. 
<laughs> what is this guy's official name? <laughs> you have one minute to remember this awful piece of history. Okay, question number two. Yeah. Anybody remember the double down? Which restaurant sold this sandwich with no bread? Okay, number three. What is the name of these equestrian slash military styled pants? They have a name. What is it? Okie doke. Number four. Another pair of pants. What's the name of the brand that made these trendy 1990s jeans popular? And oh boy, did we find some other information out about them that we will share with you in the answers that we just were cracking up over. What's the brand? Oh, we're laughing so hard at uh, the Kirby's response. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a definitely a 1960s uh, photograph. This was called like 
some sort of like tuna surprise thing. Uh, and that whole middle section is supposed to have like tuna and stuff in it. But I just wanted to bring that up and remind you about that gelatin time period. But in what century was gelatin first documented as being used for food? Like in recipes or because some cook made note of it that that's what they were doing. Century. Century. Okay, question number six. <laughs> Before becoming Cabbage Patch Dolls, what were these handmade originals called? They had a different name. Um, that same guy made them. Yeah, but, he did. But when they, you know, became Cabbage Patch Dolls, they were manufactured with the plastic heads that were all the same. Uh, that was not the case when... Uh, was it Xavier or something or other? Xavier Roberts. Was When he was making them, just like hand making them, they all looked like this and very different from one another. So what were they originally called? Okay, going to the next one. Number seven. These images of are of what highly regulated substance that was formerly used in many construction applications? Okay, last one for this game. What is this person's name?
Okay, uh, any questions we need to go back over for this round? Or, you know, just like if you want to look at any of those pictures and remember like Jello or whatever, I don't know, just let us know. Um, we're going to give you a few minutes otherwise to get your affairs in order for this round, get your questions all settled or your answers, I mean, to the questions all settled. It's hard to do music trivia when we don't totally know what we're doing with all of the technology. Um, you know, like playing the music through, I have to like figure out how to do that. And I don't know how to do that. So I didn't do any music trivia. But, you know, if we do this again, we could do some music trivia. I'm open to that because this was actually like it worked exactly like it was supposed to. So I'm good. Good. There's a request for question three. Question three. Okay. Here it is. Oh, the first pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Drew Timothy, the copyright. Well, I think you can do a certain length of time before like clips that are under 15 seconds, I think, or something like that are okay. No. Um, but yeah, we'd have to figure that out too, wouldn't we? Like how you do that. I would assume the same would go for movie trivia too. Oh, maybe all of you though would prefer, you know, if we just had the lyrics and Steven had to sing it. <laughs> Some of us might prefer that more than others. <laughs> Any other requests? <laughs> oh, it would be fun if you sang this stuff. Mm -hmm. really, because sometimes, literally, guys, sometimes he is singing stuff, and I and I know the song, and I don't know what it is sometimes. <laughs> Bonnie also barked yes. Oh, so we have so many votes for that. That would be that would actually be really great. Maybe we would do that. Yeah. YouTube would never pick up the copyright nope. stuff. <laughs> oh, we could do it that way. We'll just have to get creative with that. <laughs> yes, both styles of pants were, I'm sure, super flattering to all figures. Yep. All right. Okay, we ready answers. for the answers. Here we go. Here we go. So we will accept two answers for question number one. Who is the annoying paperclip? Uh, they officially named it Clip It, but everybody called it Clippy, and they, you know, the creators called it that too. Where could you get a double down? at KFC and actually Steven and I are still kind of bummed that we never tried it because yeah. now I want to try it. It just, wow. Uh, the puffy pants at the top, those are a jod furs. Um, and I'm sure some of you got the brand that made those. <laughs> Steven wrote this. <laughs> Steven wrote this. What brand made the stupid giant jeans popular? Genko. I'm sure some of you remember Genko jeans. Yes. Oh man. You Apparently. Couldn't, you couldn't see people's shoes. No. Apparently, they still exist as a company, and they still make stupid giant jeans. However, 80s and 90s vintage ones are being listed at $500 on eBay right now. But are they going for $500? That's the real question. All of them are being listed for that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. What was the... There was something else that you were talking about with the Genco jeans, I thought. 
I don't know. I don't know. It might have been something else that we were talking about. Uh, from what century is the first recorded use of gelatin in a recipe? That was the 15th century. So long ago. Just boiling up the animal parts and, you know, eating that stuff. Uh, Cabbage Patch dolls were actually originally called little people, and they all looked like that um, because the creator just handmade all of their heads and stuff and their faces, and uh, that was, they, you really could just end up with whatever. Um, they were sold at craft fairs, actually, in, I think, Georgia first or something yes. like that, and it was, it went crazy for some reason. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, but I'm going to try. Chrysotile, crocodilite, and amosite are all types of asbestos. And you guys know, because this is, this is 2021, and you're like, why did you have to bring this up? What is that woman's name? It's Carol Baskin. Just Carol Baskin. Just, she, to some, has a longer official title, but we will not say this <laughs> no. right now. Uh, and she's like, oh, you cool cats and kittens. So, oh, we're on the wrong camera. Hold on. Mm, going back up to the other camera. Okay, Woo! there we go. Woo! The, that's the difference between our laptop's webcam and the one that Caleb brought over. So, thank you, Caleb. Um, Ooh, Dotsons have 500 plus points. <laughs> <laughs> it's cracking me up. But, oh. Okay. Yeah. So I guess at this point, give us your final score on, uh, on Slack. Give us your final score, everybody. And once we determine who that person who the team is that has that final the highest final score uh clearly the dodsons and strassners and whoever's on that team else spies um but you know <gasps> we might have to come up with a tiebreaker real quick wow <laughs> uh-oh it's gonna come out of steven's trivia laden brain and not not something <laughs> What did I, what did we pull out? Did we pull a couple things out? It's just another bird. Is it yeah. real or No, not? I, I deleted a couple questions about books. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, anyways, do we have a tie? We do have, it seems to be... A tie at 34 total points between the Stark team and the Campo team. Whoa. Uh, arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yourselves in your own homes? <laughs> no, we'll be like, one of you gets me, and one of you gets you, and we arm wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> Overtime. Oh no. I don't know if we have. What's the plan? What's the plan? Mm. Okay, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna come up with a plan here. Talk amongst yourselves. <sighs> For a, a uh you know. Okay. We're finding something. Here we go. No. No. Okay. That's stupid. Yeah, we're looking stuff up. None of them are good. Uh-uh. These aren't the questions. No. Okay. We're working on it. We're working on it. I'm like, wow, we should have looked this stuff up. <laughs> it was just so much easier if we had done that. Okay, that's a good one. Oh, and they both of these teams okay. did really well with sports, so we're going to give you a sports one, okay? Uh, and this will be closest, so this is good. This is a good tiebreaker yeah, because it'll be closest, uh, and it can be over or under, but closest to the actual year will will be the winning one, all right? 
Here's your tie break question. Wait. No. Oh, okay. Do we type in our answer? <clears throat> uh, yeah. Yeah, type in your answer. Well, okay. Nah. We'll give you time to decide on an answer, and when we ask for it, you type it in. That's right. Yeah. So that way you're not influenced by the other team's answer, okay? And anyone else can answer for fun, too. You just aren't going to get any kind of prize for it. No. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Yep, yep. Okay, here we go. Okay. In what year was the first ever Wimbledon championship held? First Wimbledon year. There's a tie for second. Oh, the tiebreaker. Yeah, we've done, we have actually played the game How Many Picks Are in Jeff's Pockets. It's like a worship team game, though. It's always more than you think. <laughs> How many picks are in my pockets? Zero. You never yes. have guitar picks for any reason. Unless I'm chewing on them. They wouldn't be in your pocket then. They'd just be in your Well, mouth. if I put them in there to chew on later. I never found any of your chewed up guitar picks. <laughs> Okay, are you ready to put in your answers? Have you come up with a year that you think makes the most sense for the first ever Wimbledon championship? <laughs> How many picks are in your washer? At any given time, Lynn, I think a lot. I'm going to say over 15 every time. All right. Uh... Okay. Put your answers in. Put your actual answers in. Two teams who did pretty well with the sports ones. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay. Okay, so I got a private message from Tyler saying 1908 and David for Team Stark saying 1888. The correct answer is 1877. Yep. So congratulations, Starks. I I'm proud of you, family. I'm proud of you. Although I do want to know how many questions... Rita answered. <laughs> oh, I hope you guys had fun. Um, do give us your feedback on whether or not this is a, a fun way to spend an evening, whether or not you had some people on your mind that you wanted to connect with and um, play a game with. Mm -hmm. uh, I have learned being married to this very introverted man that having an activity to do when you're getting together with people is really great actually it allows for a lot of good fun yeah and everybody kind of knows what you're doing so even if you are um emily stark is at home going no no <laughs> I <have> to play games <laughs> i said activity if you're doing an activity but if you're doing an activity together it's it does i think um make that connection work out especially if you're like i don't know this person very well so if we do this again just i just encourage you again to like i don't know invite your neighbors into it uh find some people or just see who god maybe puts on your mind as you're thinking about it and yeah. also let us know if you would do it again if you think it was fun if it was uh worth spending two hours almost on the dot uh we have to cut off at nine just go blank <laughs> time no no yeah so yep yeah and it's would be real easy for us to do this again yeah because i know a lot of things it's only useful for doing trivia yeah we could also help anybody else who wanted to try hosting if they were like oh i don't want to do some portion of it we can help out too so thanks for joining us for an evening uh 
webcammed into our home once again. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I've gotten so used to it in this year. Yeah. Just like we never did. I would never. If somebody had said, oh, you could post stuff up on YouTube, I'd be like, I'd never do that ever. But here we are in 2021. So let's give, uh, give us your feedback on the Slack, please. Let us know how it went. 